Now then chaps, this is my 2002 M3. The car turns 20 years old this year. I've owned it for five, five wonderful years I've owned this car now. It's got its MOT this week though. It's MOT time and yeah, I've got a few warning lights that I need to attend to. So the video today, we're gonna try and make the dash clear. It's a bit of a Christmas tree at the minute. It's not too bad. You'd have seen a lot worse. All right, let's see what's on the dash. Ever since I got the car five years ago, every now and again, I will get a battery light, but it's not on at the minute. And it's always, you know, the alternate is always fine. I'm not sure what's tripping it, but yeah, sometimes I get that. But luckily that's not illuminated either because that's another thing that could be a problem when it comes around to the MOT. But let's fix the ones on the left first, nice and easy. The first one, we need some fuel, right? Then we'll get on with the water, see if the washer fluid stuff. The M3 has um, jets out into the headlights for the Xenons. So yeah, that's uh, possibly leaking. I think that's why the lights on, I think, because I, I think it might, it might be leaking, but we'll, we'll have a look anyway. And then on the right hand side, the brake pad one should be easy to get off, but it's been illuminated now probably for years, right? It's been illuminated for years. And the hardest one will definitely be that airbag warning light. But let's get to it. First stop, fuel. I'm tempted to just go for a drive today and not try and fix any of these problems. <clears throat> right, we've been braced for action. Where are we going to start? Might as well start with the easy ones, eh? Just put some water in it and see if that takes off the light. See if we've got any leaks on the system. I guess I'm going to have to spray it a bit so that the poppers come out. I think they actually test for that on the MOT now as well, or maybe they always did. Obviously M3, being an upper-class citizen, came with them fancy lights from the factory. Well, the factory here, so they pop out here and spray the light. Now I think we might get tested on that. Let's just say I've, I've usually got someone who can sort out MOTs, but at the moment that's not an option. That's why we're being a little bit more vigilant, but at the same time, a good video because this will apply to everyone. Everyone gets MOT concerns, don't they? So, you know, we'll start with this washer and we'll see if everything works. If we just chuck some water in it, it's missing its cap. It's not a good start. But we'll just chuck some water in it and see how it goes, eh? Screen wash or coolant? Screen wash or coolant? Well, oh. <laughs> it could be either. I think it's stream wash. Right, the light's off. But does the system work? Oh no, look what's come back to haunt us. Because I mentioned it this morning, the battery lights come back on. This is the reason I drive around with a multimeter in the passenger door pocket. Well, we fixed one thing, we fixed two things, no more of our fluid warning lights are enabled. But now the battery is whinging. Let's go and see if it stopped charging for some reason. I don't think it will have done, but let's go and uh, read the voltage on the battery. Okay, yeah, look, see, the alternator is working just fine, but for some reason that battery warning light keeps coming on. Will the MOT tester take a certain disliking to it? That's annoying. Why are you doing that for? This is the first time it's done it this year. I've drove, driven it loads this year. It's the first time it's happened this year, and it's happened on the day I mentioned it, of course. Right, as the two-post ramp is in a very rare free state, there's no one parked on there not me not a certain Vauxhall not a Nissan it's just look not nothing's there I think we should put the 3 Series on there and have a look 
one at sorting out the brake pad warning light that should be a nice easy one not sure what side it is but we can have a look and yeah see why the washer thing is not not working and it's, it's leaking quite badly as well if i just roll the car back so yeah it looks like the passenger side is uh not working so well all right just before we get too fixed up into mending things right just before we get too in depth with that let's have a look around the car let's have a look underneath it so as you'll know because you're a loyal subscriber five years we've had this car may 2017 i bought it gave every penny in the world that i had sold my 330d and bought this and when i got it it was a kind of it was the kind of car which today would be worth who knows what these cup two tires by the way still holding on just fine they've got about three mil of tread left i mean that's getting a bit close there but they've got about three mil of tread left and the amazing thing is the rears despite you know being a a rear wheel drive m3 and me enjoying every second of that most of the time the the rears are holding on pretty well too not much difference in the rears to the fronts all right the front wheel is off now fixing this pad warning light i think that'll be a nice and simple job it's not looking too bad in here by the way while we're here obviously this area still looks pretty aged but it's better than a big hole i need this panel if anyone's breaking an m3 just this plastic trim from these three downwards i need a new one of these i keep forgetting to yeah, hopefully when I'm editing this video I can go on eBay and check if there's any for sale but if not and you're breaking an M3 I think they're M3 specific so if anyone's got one I will take one. Oh there's a rust spot there we'll not worry about it too much so anyway there's two wires going into this little box down here one's for the wheel speed sensor hang on can you hear some revving outside looks like there's some fun stuff going on out here where are you going? You're kind of going to fall off on this side. Really close. You need to turn this way a bit. Interesting. I could hear some revving and I thought, what was that? Anyway, back to this. So there's this little junction box here, look, and all I've done when I've fitted the Brembo's, I've unplugged that sensor and just left it. I'd rather not ruin this plug, so I might go and have a look at my standard brakes to see if I can find a sensor. If not, all we need to do is touch these wires together. So we can either cut it here and just nip them together and put them back in that box, or we can try and find a male or you know the other end of this plug and do it all neat inside there, which I'm gonna try and do, which will be a, a much neater option. But let's go and see if I can find something. Time to get digging with spiders, I think. Are oh, you doing integrity? Still white under there, yeah? Looking fresh. Some serious spiders on the go down here, but I've been successful. If I can just reach that. Oh no. Oh, there we go. All right, that's what we wanted. So with this, we can make a delete. In fact, should we try and be right posh and put a bit of heat shrink over there? We could even solder it, but I don't think I'm... I'm not friends with the soldering iron at the minute after the MR2 lambda sensors. I'll give it some extra twists for good luck. And then we'll put a bit of heat shrink over it and it'll look right good. Look at that. Cest Professional. It's got a little bit of a hole in the, in the top, like, so... You know, let's hope no water gets in there. It might put a little bit of... All right, it's looking slightly less professional now, but... Still, you know, what more do you want, eh? So the question is, will this fit? Of course it'll fit, but will it fix? All right, it's a good job we did put the cover on for the water. As it sticks out, look. What's it gonna do, short out even more? You know, hopefully now we don't have any warning lights, but let's see if we can check. It appears to still be on. All right, so maybe they're on the rear as well, I don't know. Let's find out. All right, this took some investigation, but I think it does have one on the rear as well. Probably could have just Googled it in the time I've spent looking, but if we look at the trailing arms here, they've got cables coming off. Now this only has one, so does the other side. But there's a little junction box right the way in there. Can you see it? 
And see how there's one wire coming out the top of it? If we check on this side, on the driver's side, this one has two wires coming out of it. So I'm guessing the second one, one will be the wheel speed sensor that we can see here. I'm guessing that the other one must be another uh, brake pad warning trigger system, yeah? So how are we gonna get to that? I'm guessing the ramp's gonna be in the way. That's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Hmm, that's annoying. I thought it'd just have them on the front, but it looks like it's got front and rear. And I don't think I've got another well, I definitely haven't got another brake, so we're going to have to do it dirty on this side. What's that there? A little rust spot. Don't be rusting. Oh. Oh. Oh, you see it all when you're underneath, don't you? Okay, stick with me a second. Stick with ADHD brain. So, in order to get that ramp leg out, I got the tables out, right? But in order to put the car on the tables, I had to put the front left wheel on. Which brought me back to the investigation of why is that water thing leaking and you won't believe why it's leaking right see if you can work this out so i'll pull this panel off yeah see if you can work out why that might be leaking any ideas i'll leave it open for a couple more seconds and you try and figure it out you know countdown theme music it's copyrighted so i can't use it fully but i'll just do the last bit Dun, dun, dun. And that's the bill. Let's count down. Dun, 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 Boom. Yeah, I think we can fix this one a little bit easier. Now, truth be told, it wasn't quite fully out like that. It was just like that when I got to it. But, you know, Hollywood baby. Oh, I've done some engineering and modified one of them hairpin R clip things. And now we have a clip which secures the pipe, which is exactly what we wanted. Now this might still be stuck, it might still not work, so we'll test it with all this off. But yeah, we can put the wheel on now and start looking again at the rear brake pad wear sensor. Right, we have to be a little bit more savage, a little bit less pretty on this rear one, right? So if I need to get access, There it is. Just see it there. Now I've had a look at the spares department. I got in touch with them and no one had a spare sensor. Couldn't find one. I think this is going to be the best way of us trying to do it neat in the position that it's in. So, one bullet connector. So I can just about snip and trim those wires. Bullet connect to them both at the same time into the one connector. Complete the circuit and take the light out. Fingers crossed. Could do a bit more leverage on this, if at all possible. These rear plastics, the right jigsaw to get together, so I'm reluctant to take any more pieces off than what I need to. If I can just struggle like that, I can get, I can get in there. It looks, you know, it's not ideal, but I can just about get in. That'll be fine, I think. I tried to put one in one way and one in the other, but it wasn't happening. So both in the same. Doesn't matter, does it? Dropping the wheel speed sensor plug down, gave me a bit more room as well, so. Will that now clear the light? Should we have a test? I think I can just about reach. Okay, so hopefully it should now illuminate and then go straight back out. Okay, it seems to still be on. Oh, come on. And the battery light's still there, you can fuck off. Okay, further investigation required. I'll get on the Google, shall I? Right, the internet suggests that we just have to wait 25 seconds and the computer will do a smart and uh, figure it out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, 22, 23, 24, 25. Ah, he fucking did it! He fucking did it! I thought that was going to be complete bullshit or maybe just some American thing, but it did it. We're, we're winning. We're winning. We're doing it. We're doing the thing. Right, I'll get that all back nipped up. I can't believe that worked. I'm proper shocked. Nice. Okay, so I'll get this tidied up. 
and then we're on to the next one. Well, we may as well see if the washers work while she's in the air. The airbag thing, obviously we'll do it on the floor somewhere I reckon, but I'll get everything buttoned back up and then we'll test the washers. I'm going to try and see if these washer things work for the headlights. Just not sure what the requirements are for it to work. I imagine maybe engine running headlights on, but yeah. The 46 headlight washers. Headlights need to be on in every third or fourth time. You can hear a pump. So apparently it's on its own pump according to this. I heard the pump, but nothing else. Okay, this headlight is now crying. So, something going on there. Neither of them are working just yet. Oh, we've got a drip here. So, I guess that one's leaking. They might just be clogged up. I wonder if there's a way to free them off. Well, next thing we can do then is take, take these off, pull that off and see if we can free them off. We've got these out, right? The covers. So they pop out obviously, and there's two jets here. And guess what, it's all blocked up to Fook. Yeah, no S bueno, no S uh, getting through there. If I can't blow through it, then what I can get through, can I? Okay, so let's try and put 50 PSI through here and see what happens. Oh baby. Did you hear it pop? Listen for this one. See if that makes a difference anyway. Okay, ready for another test. See if that did anything. I heard the pump run again, but nothing's happened. It sounds like the pump's freewheeling. Can you hear it? Oh, I got quite involved into this now. Hard to get these bloody headlamp washers working on the track car, right? Guess what, I've made a discovery, right? So in the driver's side wheel arch area, no, not the surface rust, I'm talking about this here, right? So you heard it, I heard it, it sounded like one of the pumps was just whirring away. Well, there's two pumps, right? There's a, like a, a normal sized pump, you could say, but then there's an extra large pump. Now, why would there be an extra large pump? Would there be an extra large pump because it has to build up more pressure in order to make these telescopic, well, they're not telescopic, are they? Or are they telescopic? I don't know. But to make these washers come out, it has to build more pressure. So maybe that's why it has a larger pump. Now, another thing you might notice, look where the level is. Anyway, what I'm thinking, yeah, so this one's a bit further down and that's, you know, because I've only got a little bit of washer fluid in there. I'm thinking that is working all right. And I'm thinking this one, Maybe you just can't reach it, and that's why it sounds like it's just spinning away. Although, you know, it kind of does look like it should be able to suck some up there. But let's try the airline in here and see if they pop out. I give you the front row seat. Oh, yes. So I reckon then to fix this, we should just put more coolant slash screen wash in it and see if it starts to work. Right, We've got more than enough now. Look, it's up to here. So, is that gonna be the fix? We've cleaned them out. We've oiled, I did put some oil on the telescopic bits, if that's the right word. And we've put some more screen washer fluid in. Now, will it fix? Will it work? Will we get some water? <laughs> yes, you are clean now. I appreciate what I've done for you. All right, I'll get tidied up then. And then we've just got one thing left to do, which is the airbag light. Hopefully that won't be a pain in the ass. Digital, live cam. 
Four errors in memory. Here's some software that I need to try and find the cable for if I can. BMW scan. I don't think it'll work off this cable. But this was pretty legit back in the day. Nah. Okay. Uh, I think I've got a specific cable for it. I'll try and find it. Resistance to GR055. Mistake. Not sporadic. Belt tensioner passenger. Hmm. Isn't technology wonderful? So I cleared the codes and the one that come back was only about the passenger seat belt, which obviously doesn't exist. Yeah, I didn't think about that. The, the seat belts are not here either, so maybe that's a problem. Hmm. I'll try and find that BMW scanner cable because I think I'll have more success with that. Okay, this is the juicy one. This is the PA soft thing. I don't know if it's a clone of it or what, but this is the BMW scanner 1.40 which I can't remember when I got this. I feel like I got it before I had the M3, one of the other three series or something, but yeah, this does a bit of coding as well with a nice little GUI over the top. There's a few things I want to turn off as well, like the doors have got like an anti-hijack thing, so the doors will lock themselves uh, after, I don't know, 10 mile an hour or something. I want to turn that off because, you know, safety and stuff, you know, not very good on a track day, that is it. It gets annoying, so. Uh, hopefully we can get the airbags off as well. Hopefully it still works. I've just found it in, yeah, it was in that, you know, in, in the mess of the, the corner. I found it though. It just uses a printer cable, an A to B, USB A to USB B. Yeah, let's see if it works. It's working. Look at that. We are on 200,000 kilometers exactly. It's pretty good, isn't it? 124,000 miles on the clock, so yeah. Right, fingers crossed, I can do the things. This is finding a few more errors, like. Well, I say finding and making them more easily to see because I don't have the right versions of the Impers. Okay, it's flashing now, but I might have got it off. I'm just winging this, fully winging it, by the way. But I noticed an option in here, right? So there's, there's some shadow errors, whatever they are. Maybe that's why it's flashing, but there's some, there's an area in here called coding data equipment and in here I just unticked loads of things all right I'm ready to go home now after a successful day fixing faults and making this the most MOT friendly car in the world oh you know something like eh? now just I started tidying up I thought I'd unplug the battery just to see if it you know reset something that the codes couldn't get to. I don't understand that battery light. It's, it's been a problem. I must have mentioned it before. It's been a problem for a long time. Like, you know, it was the first issue I ever had with a car and it just never kind of went away. But, well, I say it never went away. It's like a ghost problem. It comes and goes. It visits me sometimes, says hello, and then it pisses off. But it's time to go home now. So, will we get a nice clean dash or not? Because that's what we really want. Should put the battery here. Back on, reinstall. So cross all your fingers, cross all your toes. The fuck, what have you come back for? You're not meant to be there. That's a disaster, I thought, ah. All right, I've gone for the nuclear option on the airbag, so in the options, I've just unticked everything, so no airbags, no problems, please. I don't want any airbags. Okay, so, all right, so we're back there, we're doing a bit of a flash at the minute, but. And why can't you tell me what's wrong with my battery, huh? Why is the battery showing Dell warning lights? No, you or the other software can't seem to tell me anything about that. Well, that's all from today. We were nearly successful in eradicating all of these warning lights from the cluster on the E46, but one of them has come back to haunt me. I've not got my MOT for a couple of days, so hopefully between then and now, that battery light will go out. I'm sure it will, it comes and goes, but for now we're done. I've just got rid of the airbag light again. Hopefully that doesn't come back either, but I guess we'll find out. I'll let you know how it goes. Another E46 video coming soon on the drift car. Some good news for that, some exciting news for that car. So more BMW content to come. 
my Bavarian fans, yeah. DC2 got some work recently, don't worry about that. And the MR2, that's just a racing car. That, that's fine for a little bit. MR2 is racing again in two weeks. We're doing a endurance kind of, well, endurance. We're doing one of those 45 minute races that you've seen me cover so often with Kevin and, and you know other folk racing. Well, we're doing one in the MR2 for a bit of a laugh, really. So that'll be fun. Keep an eye out for that. Plenty of content to come, like and subscribe. Thank the Patreons. And yeah, this was my fixing everything and making the 46 legal for an MOT video. And we almost got there. We almost did it, but failed right at the end. Just a little bit. But I'm sure that battery light will piss off anyway, so be all right. Right, it's the day after. Are you ready for some bullshit? More bullshit? That's unbelievable. Battery light gone, airbag light remains. I think we're gonna have to try and get some resistors on the go, but yeah. Okay, this is the last, last update. I think I've got it cracked. So I've not had to install any resistors or anything, but I have enabled quite a lot more things in the SRS options. So when I checked the codes today, I had like 30 errors or something, because of everything that I'd done ticked on that menu. Uh, but now, Oh. That was uh, good timing. I had Land Rover outside. Just cycled the ignition a few times to hopefully. Reset everything nice and good. Anything. Great success. Key off. Key on. Read errors. No errors. Yay! I'm just pulling up for my MOT. Not a single warning light. Look. Mission success. Thank you and good night. Let's just hope it passes on everything else. What do you think? Yeah, it'll pass. Yeah.